and welcome to SCAN, a show brought to you by SCAN, the Social Communities Activities Network. SCAN is a nonprofit agency that is dedicated to helping active adults stay informed, empowered, and inspired. I'm your host, Tracy Wolfman, CEO of We Care Adult Care, and the Vice President on the Board of Directors of SCAN. I'd like to welcome my guest today, who is Marilyn Abrahamson. Thank you. Um, who is a speech and language pathologist at Center State Medical Center. The topic today is brain health and the upcoming brain fair. All of us are interested in how to keep our brain healthy today, so we are going to be informed and empowered today by Marilyn on how to stay brain healthy. So thank you so much for coming today, Marilyn. Hi, Tracy. And you're going to teach us everything we need to stay active. Um, just before we start, I want to let our audience know about all your vast experience. Marilyn is the mother of two grown sons and a lifelong resident of New Jersey. She has been a speech-language pathologist since 1987 with her focus on treatment on adults with injuries, diseases of the brain, both acquired and traumatic. While working with these patients, Marilyn discovered her fascination of the brain with the realization that patients with proper training could return to function through neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change itself. That's going to be a wonderful discussion to have later. Marilyn holds a master's degree from Keene University in New Jersey and is a certified brain health coach through the Amen Clinics she has been an adjunct professor at Keene University, Nathan Wise Graduate College, teaching advanced dysphagia, assessment and intervention since 2009. Since 2004, Marilyn has been the coordinator of the outpatient speech-language pathology program at Central State Medical Center, a motion program in 2017. Mind in Motion is a social-based brain health program designated to teach participants lifestyle adjustments that facilitate the development of cognitive reserve for longer, stronger brains throughout the lifespan. Wow, that's a lot of uh, interaction of our brains, huh? Marilyn's philosophy is focused on function. She believes that test scores, although helpful, should not determine the goals for the patients and clients. Getting to know people, how their deficits adversely affect their lives, serve to guide her development of goals for each individual. Marilyn has observed in her practice that when patients see improvement in their daily lives, particularly of those tasks that are most difficult for them, they remain motivated and are most likely to succeed. So welcome to the show today, Marilyn. And we have a local audience that hopefully will benefit from what we're going to inform them about today. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, it's interesting with the whole thing with memory impairment and um, people worrying about it that um, they could pos possibly pick up some helpful tips today. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your role at Central State Medical Center. Well, um, you know, as you said, I've been a speech pathologist there. I've, I started the speech language pathology program, didn't exist uh, before I got there. Um, and through working with the patients there, I just discovered that uh, by asking patients to do certain things differently, by asking them to compensate for their impairment, mm -hmm. I found that they were able to get some function back and I started thinking to myself, imagine what could happen if you have somebody that doesn't have an impaired brain. Right. So I developed the Minds in Motion program for people who, you know, over 40-ish, right. who are starting to experience some changes in the brain. And I've been teaching these classes since 2016. It's been very well received. It just doesn't seem feasible to me that before you started, you said you were there for 14 years, mm -hmm. that they didn't have a speech program. They had an inpatient speech pathologist, but that's all they had. That is your creativity and insight into that just is an ad benefit to so many people, I'm sure. Um, why is it important to teach the people about brain health now, today? Because the brain makes us who we are. It produces every experience, every action, every response, every feeling that we have. And I think, you know, 
really over the years, people have really um, maybe taken their brains for granted yes, a little bit. Yes, I agree. Um, you know, they exercise their bodies, and that's great. But I think until now, it really hasn't been on the forefront. And now it is. And we know that there are things that people can do to keep their brains healthy. So by providing education, we increase the awareness right. of the importance of doing something, taking something. an actionable task, right. and, and telling these people step by step what those tasks are. People need to know step by step what to do first, what to do next. It gives them that feeling of control, and that's why it's so important to teach. It is important to teach, and I think, um you know, we deal with a senior, active senior population here. But when you think about all of the um, information that's now available about kids in sports and concussions and past athletic people who are having difficulty now because nobody ever took into consideration the damages that were being done. Yes, absolutely. So it's a whole new world of taking care of our brain, another body part to worry about, right? right. <laughs> Um, you said that the normal aging for our brains to change as we age, but um, do we know what normal and what should spark concern? Yes. I yes. think that's the biggest question because myself, I haven't reached that uh, senior age yet, but I'm getting close. Mm -hmm. um, but you've probably noticed some changes. Oh, 100%. And is it overload or is it forgetfulness? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I want to start by saying that a lot of people that I talk to about that will come to me and use the word decline when they're talking about normal changes. Because there are changes, and I'm going to tell you what those are. Oh, that's... Um, but I do want to say that I prefer to use the word change when we're talking about normal because I have worked with people who are in decline. It is not easy to bring back function when a brain is in a state of decline. But if a brain is in a state of change, which is what we're Most talking about today, aging. you can use a compensatory strategy. So if you think every body part changes, your knees, your back, everything, your joints. Correct. So if you dropped your keys on the floor, you'd bend down. And if there was a table here, you'd put your hand on the table and allow yourself to be helped up by the table, right? We Correct. wouldn't think twice about it. It's just a compensatory strategy. Yes. When it comes to the brain, people don't know how to compensate. So they feel this hopeless sort of state of decline. All we need to do is teach people in that state of change right. a compensatory strategy. And they say, oh. Yeah, that works now. So no you know, brainer, right? This. Right. It's sometimes it's mindfulness awareness. Now, the things that no there are things that normally change, and I'm going to tell you about two of them today. The ones that you probably notice the most. The first one is processing speed. That feeling of it just takes an extra couple of seconds to get it out, mm. and. You know, There's a delay. Yeah, like if you're watching Jeopardy, you were always great at Jeopardy. You're still great at Jeopardy, but suddenly you can't get the answers out now before the buzzer. Right. Okay. It's, it's like I knew it. I knew it. You know. Um, but you know, ironically, when you have that tip of the tongue phenomenon, can't remember a name, a movie star. Right, and everyone has that at every age. Right. Well, that's related to processing speed as well. Another aspect of our cognition that tends to change, mm -hmm. normal change, is attention. So this is going to make it harder to have a conversation in a restaurant when there's a lot of distraction around. Correct. It may make you feel like you have to read a paragraph a couple of times. You have to go back and look at it again. Because you're not retaining. You're not retaining, but you're also, your attention, your focus isn't what it used to be. It's really more that. You think it's attention, but it's really more attention. And you have to also understand that we get all of our information through our senses. And as people get older, what happens to vision and what happens to hearing? Sometimes right. we get quite a lot of change in that, too. And people don't take notice to have those things tested first. Right. Now, I've had people actually come in for cognitive testing thinking that they're impaired cognitively because people say, you know, I told you this. Why don't you remember it? Right. When really, they just didn't hear it yeah, right. in the first place. So, so it's interesting, um, the self-awareness, and I think this is great for our audience and our viewers today, is that at least they'll be more aware now of things that you should have tested, you know, before you go all out and say, I'm having a cognitive decline. Exactly. Now, here's the big question. Can we control or change our risk of getting Alzheimer's disease and dementia? Yes, and this is where the education comes in, because if people understand this particular 
aspect of the brain. They will know, they will understand this is something that um, I can change. Um, how we function is directly related to brain volume, brain size. And we've got billions of neurons, yes, nerve billions. cells. And each one of them has thousands, actually millions of connections between them that have pathways. And all of our impulses travel along those pathways. So everything we do, our breathing, swallowing, walking, picking a pen up, all of the things that we know, all of the skills that we have, have neural pathways associated with those skills. With those actions. That's right, and the more activated neural pathways we have in our brain, the more voluminous our brain will be. Brain volume is what's important when a person quits their job, and then they don't replace those deactivated neural pathways with new knowledge, new learning. Right. What happens is they begin to diminish and they shrivel. They don't go away, so if you want to reactivate them, you can. But they don't take up very much room anymore, so the brain doesn't have to accommodate them. Simply, the brain begins to shrink as we do less and less. So if people understand that, then they know, I'm not going to be in that book club anymore. I'm going to learn how to play canasta. Right, so they're regenerating those right. neurons. If you quit your job so you can travel the world, that's fantastic. But if you quit your job because you want to watch TV, not so good. Not so good at all. So you're going to notice the changes. We um, previously, I guess, on our show was how to reinvent your second act. And, you know, it was just that message that we were trying to get. You stop one thing. All of us are somebody in our world of our professional careers. Yes. And we all utilize skills. But when you stop those skills, you know, a lot of, I think they need to teach a class on how to retire, how to reinvent yourself, and how to keep what you just said, the neurons reactivated. Because it is so essential for all brain health and also your well being. Right. And I think previously that hasn't been taken into consideration. Thank you, right. So we'll do one more thing here before we go to break. Cognitive reserve and how we can get it to modify our lifestyle choices. Okay. Cognitive reserve is the brain's defense against damage. It's reserve. It's extra. This was discovered in a research study done back in the 1800s where they had active, healthy people who donated their brains to science. They did um, autopsy on their brains after death and they found that their brains showed significant signs of dementia and plaques associated with Alzheimer's disease. When they went back and looked at these people's lifestyles, they realized that they had very good brain volume Correct. and they had active health, brain healthy lifestyles. And so that was what helped them to create that cognitive reserve. And really, it's just the gift of years. It's the gift of years and the utilization. Plus, we're living a lot longer, so people's brains weren't as old then also. Right. We need those years. We definitely need those years. So those are just a few helpful tips for our audience today. There's one thing that I did want to mention is Marilyn here will be the keynote speaker at our Brain Health Fair on June 11th at Center State Hospital. That is from 10.30 to 1.30, and I hope you will all join us. We are going to take a short break here on Welcome to SCAN. We will return with more important information um, for you right after we take this break. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you are getting good helpful hints for you to expand your brain health. So, if you're over 65, like me, and active and fairly healthy, being active and healthy alone will not protect you. Remember, the immune system weakens with age. And if you're over 65, ask your doctor about your vaccination options. We want you to be healthy and active. Thank you for joining us again on Welcome to SCAN. We are back from the second half of Welcome to SCAN, and I would like to remind you that my special guest here today is Marilyn Abrahamson. She is the speech and language pathologist at Central State Medical Center. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. So we're learning about brain health today, and what is the difference between normal decline and possibly cognitive decline? 
We are also talking about how to keep your brain healthy, some different forms of Alzheimer's or and dementia. So Marilyn, let's briefly go back to a few types of memory impairment that we call dementia. We know that dementia are the symptoms and people sometimes I think don't understand the differences. Well, there are various types of dementia. Yes. Um, Alzheimer's is just one type, right. um, but um, one of the most common types of dementia, well, Alzheimer's, of course, is the most common types of dementia, but another type of dementia that's also very common is something called vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is caused by um, sometimes like mini strokes almost, by lack of oxygen going to different areas of the brain, um, where Alzheimer's disease starts more as a disorientation and forgetfulness Vascular dementia can occur anywhere in the brain, and so you might People have different know. types of right, different types of uh, forgetfulness and symptoms, mm -hmm. if you will. And then you know, there's dementia that specifically goes to the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is is responsible for personality. It's responsible for uh, executive functions, organization, planning. Why don't you like just that. explain to our audience briefly what that executive function is, if you don't mind, because I want them to realize that there is a difference. Executive function skills the, from the frontal lobe of the brain um, are organization, uh, decision making, judgment, planning. Um, People, you might notice that their judgment is is not what it used to be and significantly changing or declining. You might notice that people are not able to make decisions. You might notice that they've got mail piled up for weeks because they can't make decisions and they can't and they become very overwhelmed very easily. Right, and they don't know which where to start. Right, right. And then the longer it goes on, the harder it is to know where to start because it just piles up on them piles up on them and then it becomes too overwhelming for yes. most of these people. Yes. Um, so just so the audience knows, so there are differences and I think that's the main point we need to get across today is that you know some of it is normal and some of it is not normal and when to have that intervention. Mm -hmm. But let's move on now to one of the greatest things you can inform us about are lifestyle changes um, and choices that help reduce that. Well, the first thing that I would tell people to do is, if they're not already exercising, to engage in some kind of exercise program. You don't need to be huffing and puffing. You want to, of course, make sure you talk to your doctor first, but just more than you're doing now. And, and, and both aerobic exercise and strength training are both very important. They both do different things. Um, exercise has been shown to release a protein into the brain called BDNF, which is actually brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a brain nutrient and supports the birth of new neurons. New neurons well, we mean need more neural pathways, right? right, and a bigger brain. I tell people to eat a healthy diet. The Mediterranean diet has been shown in research to support brain health very well with antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, and something called DHA. Um, stress management. Chronic stress causes uh, cortisol to be released into the system, which is right. very damaging to the brain. Damaging. Um, sleep. Sleep is so important. It, um, it cleans out the brain of plaques that we develop throughout the day and keeps you from being foggy the next day, uh, but also helps uh, for consolidation of long-term memories. Um, and one more, oh, lifelong learning, my lifelong favorite. Lifelong learning is the greatest right. thing. And for several reasons, of course, because we want to have all of those neural pathways activated and we want new yes. ones, but also because if, you, if, if in that lifelong learning you find something that you love, it just brings on all sorts of joy and happiness yes. and novelty and it makes life interesting and fun. So when you have those, but um, also we encourage all of our active seniors, especially here at SCAN, because there is such an array of classes. Oh yeah, to it's amazing. To try something new. Mm -hmm. Because when we have people come into our center, um, you know, families will say, they were never joiners, they don't like to do that, they don't like to do this. And it's amazing what people will participate in or what they're interested in that they never did before. Exactly. And it really inspires me every time I see somebody picking up a new hobby. That's because right. we all can learn something and they say if you don't learn something new every day, you've wasted the day. Mm -hmm. So with all that teaching going on and healthy lifestyles, who would have ever imagined 
you know, the last generation, you know, going to the gym and doing all this exercise. That's right. So there's such a push on the diet and the Mediterranean diet, mm -hmm. and everyone loves Dr. Oz. He talks about it all the time. Right. Um, and the lifestyle changes, you know, park your car further away mm -hmm. and walk the distance to the mall instead of trying to get the front row parking, right? Absolutely. So those are just some of the um, lifestyle changes. Lifelong habits, undeniably hard, you say, to change. And what is the best way to tackle them? Well, I always tell people first to understand their why. Get clarity about why they're going to do it. Because without that, when things get tough, they're more likely to quit. But then once they have that clarity, I tell people to make a list of the changes they want to make. And this is not just for this. You can do this in any kind of goal any setting capacity. situation. Um, but write down exactly what you want to do. Choose as the first one, the one that's the most doable. Because you need that sense of accomplishment, that feeling of you know being able to cross it off the list, cross it give off your the brain list. that hit of dopamine, right? Yes. That success. Makes, that's right. Goes right to the pleasure center of the brain. One, it makes you want to do it again and again, and before you know it, you'll be going to the next one and the next one and the next one. And you can be happy with your accomplishments at that point. That's right. You know, we always say. Try something once, try it twice, three times, you might succeed, right? That's right. Um, are there classes people can take to help guide them to better brain health? Yes. Central State Medical Center has a program called Minds in Motion. Uh, there are and that's a program you developed, correct? I developed it and I teach it. Um, there are about five classes now. They run every month. Uh, they teach about the brain, brain health, all of the lifestyle strategies and information we talked about today. There's a class on how to think faster, how to remember names, how to think more analytically out of the box. Classes uh, being Are there simpler classes for people that wouldn't want to um, be challenging themselves and you know they might go at a slower pace? Um, I'm developing classes like that. I, we, there's a, um, an assisted living that we go to across the street from the hospital mm -hmm. and I have classes for them that I will at, at some point be bringing into Central State as well. So how many times a year do you hold these classes for this? Um, each one runs almost every month. So if they can't okay. make it one month, it's likely so to So it's kind of like a month. support group. They go every month. And um, how long do the classes last? Each one is 90 minutes. Oh. There's yeah. one class that's a four-part class, and the others at this point are all single classes. So each week they can build upon different things. So it's a new topic every week. Right. So if they miss the last one, they're not going to be out of sync. Right. And they don't have to take them in any particular order either. Okay. And is there a cost for that? They're $10 a class. Oh, so affordable. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Um, when you have these brain health classes, do you find people um, coming to them to improve their brain or they're having problems with their brain already? I get a little bit of both. Okay. Um, we do memory screenings um, through the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. And a lot of those people do come to the classes. And those are people that do feel that they're having difficulty with you know, thinking and memory skills, but not all of them actually are. Some of them are just experiencing normal c cognitive changes that we talked right, about earlier. because our brain's changing. They just don't know, and because it's so, you know, people are talking about it so much, it's right. becoming such a fear. People want to be proactive, and so that's what they're doing. So I do have some people that are experiencing some of the changes, mm -hmm. um, and some people that aren't, that are just truly being proactive and want to learn, just want to learn about the brain. They want to learn because it is all over every media outlet there is. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to resting your brain in the sleep, I just have to touch on this okay. subject because we all know that everyone is overactive on their social media sites and their cell phones. They're using their computers at night. I know for myself, I have to shut everything down an hour before to let myself clear my head mm -hmm. in order to have a good night's sleep. Because yes. if I'm doing work up until the time I go to sleep, it's always not restful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your, um, what do you try and tell people about that, the light, Yeah. just what they're seeing? Well, there are several factors to that. Um, there's something called blue light that comes out of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, the only screen, I think, that says that there is no blue light are the, the Kindle, the e-readers, and the Nook. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know but that. But things like iPads, computer screens, the clocks on your bedside, 
television screens. All of those things emit a blue, a blue light, which actually stops the secretion of uh, serotonin, I'm sorry, melatonin into your brain, which is what kind of makes you sleepy. That is so interesting. I did not know that. Right. So I do encourage people to shut that down even more than an hour beforehand. Just so they can have that rest before they go to sleep because it's just imperative. You know, we talk about sleep now that you must get your sleep in order to be alert, cognitively fresh mm -hmm. the next day. Yes, that's right. So, And you know, the, the more nights sleep that you don't get, you'll notice each of those days is worse than the last. Correct, because there's an accumulation. The plaque that accumulates every day in the brain. And, and a good night's sleep actually clears that plaque out of the brain. So for every bad night's sleep, you're having that plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have to tell everyone even more so now. Yes, we do. Get your sleep. Right. So are there any other things that you do over at the speech um, center that you would like to share with us? Um, you know, I, aside from the Minds in Motion program, I provide speech and language services to adults of with all, I never know who's coming in the door. I never okay. know what kind of um, impairment I'm going to be dealing with and that that does keep it interesting. So how, um, what are the hours and days of operation of the center? Um, it's five days a week, Monday through Friday, and I'm there every single day. Okay, so at 7.30 in the morning. If people have a concern and they want to come for a consultation with you, they do they need a prescription? They need a prescription for an evaluation and therapy, yes. Okay, so they would get that from their doctor and then they come for the evaluation and then you, like a care plan? Yes, after we do the evaluation, we just, we talk, we determine um, whether or not the person actually needs it. Okay. Um, and then we, we talk about how many times a week and, and I always tell people what the plan will be. So it must be nice, because I'm sure there are a few people that you send away. Yes, they're usually happy though. That when I I, send them yes, away. <laughs> I know. I would say so. Yeah. So that's just about our conclusion here on Welcome to Scan today. I hope that you enjoyed it. You learned something helpful. Marilyn Abrahamson from Center State uh, Medical Center, speech language pathologist. If you have any questions and you'd like to hear more from her, I'm sure you're available via email or telephone. Yes to get your health in order for the good brain. Um, thank you again, listening to Welcome to SCAN. Hope you keep watching, and until next time, we will um, be coming back with another expert speaker to hopefully enlighten you and educate you. Thank you. So